Hi, this is Tanya Sutherland. So today we're going to be talking about how to be more organized and how to actually plan your sewing, that you get more things done, that you're more precise in what you're going to be doing because you, um, you have this set plan in your mind of what you're going to be making, what you're going to be sewing, or you have a fair idea of what it is you're going to make. But if you're more organized, you'll find you'll get things done a lot quicker. And you know what it's like being a female? We tend to do so many things. We're multitasking all the time, and we always leave a lot a lot less time for ourselves to do our own little projects. Now you could be sewing for yourself so your time could be very very precious or perhaps one of these days you are thinking about in the near future to actually turn your sewing into a business. So that means you need to be as organized as possible. All right so it's all about time management okay. It's about planning what you're going to be doing you know for the whole week. You're going to set certain time Every minute, say every Monday or something, to maybe do cutting out, and then on a Tuesday night you'll be preparing a whole lot of dinners to you know, do some frozen pre-packed sort of meals so that you've got more time perhaps on a Thursday night to do some cutting out or the overlocking preparing of the sewing. So it's all about being more, um, you know, more organised with your time. Okay, so let's have a look. So time management is about setting the time aside to do things around the house, um, extra chores that you need to do or study time or get your projects done with your sewing. So once you set some time aside, it's all about planning to succeed. So you're either looking at learning new skills or you want to learn more about your sewing. So you're going to try new techniques out and different types of patterns that you want to sew and you're going to set these times aside for your sewing. And as you know, we are creative souls. So what happens with creative souls? We tend to be a little bit all over the place, but, but a bit scattered. We want to do this, we want to do this and do that, etc. So we get kind of carried away and we end up doing a lot of half-finished projects. Or we're not completing what we should be doing because we're getting distracted to do something else. And you know, there's nothing worse than having in your mind these half finished projects that continue to like nagging for you to finish so before you can even start something new. So let's get to the point of planning your sewing. The most important thing is is to repack everything as neat as possible and to give it some kind of system or some kind of structure that you easily can access and easy to see and to know what you have. Because there's nothing more frustrating than you actually go to the fabric shop and you go and purchase, um, you know, haberdasheries or pattern or fabrics and you come back home and you look at your studio or your sewing room and you realize that you really have these items and you've just gone and duplicated the expenses and costs. You might have a whole lot of stash fabric, so go through your fabric and pack it quite neatly as possible. And even if you need to put it into clear plastic um, packets, into a clear plastic container and you know that this is perhaps all the knit fabrics, is your woven fabrics, is your winter fabrics so it's easy for you to see exactly what fabrics you have got stacked away. Once you do that the next thing to do is to go through all your fabrics because you've gone through the fabrics to pack them. The next thing would be is to literally cut out little samples of the materials of your stash. And once you've written down, you know, cut out the little samples of the materials that you've got in your stash, is to write down um, how many meters you have got. Let me see if I've got a picture to show you. All right, so you've got, you're going to basically have um, little samples of your fabrics. And next to it, you write down how many meters you've got each of those particular fabrics into your file so that when you want to start sewing your new projects you know um, what fabrics you have got okay you can easily see this nice and neatly packed away and you know how many meters you have of each of those fabrics which is better for your planning correct the next thing you would do is your haberdashery so all your elastics your buttons you know, all the sort of trims that you have, your violin, your interfacing, etc. Um, you know, tassels, um, braids, hooks and eyes, you know, needles, all those types of adasteries and trims that you have is to put them into containers or into Ziploc or clear packets into a container so that you can quite easily, you know, take out the packet or little container and see what it is that you have immediately. 
not having to, you know, have to go through all these different containers or you don't know where you've put the things. So that the easier for you to see what you have, it helps you when you are designing and creating styles, knowing exactly what you have. This could be when you're sewing for yourself or perhaps if you are sewing for clients. Our customers, you know in your mind immediately what you have because it was easy for you to go and, to go and have a look at what you have before you just say you're having in, um, you know, a consultation with a customer and you kind of remember exactly what you have in stock because it's been beautifully set out for you and it's more organized. The next thing you do is look at all your sewing threads. Now I find that I use the large cones. I put them all into plastic containers, into big plastic, um, big containers. So I mean plastic little Ziploc bags into the containers. And I, I sort them into different colors. So I have one big container which is all my dark colors. Um, and then I have another container which is all my light colors like my whites, my creams, my pastel shade colors. And then the other two or three boxes are all my darker colors. So that I know easy way, it's easy for me to look for threads, knowing it's light colors that I'm looking for, or is it the dark colors. And I can quite easily see if I'm running out of thread, because I can see what the light colors are and the dark colors. And I have a little notebook, that I actually have a little clipbook, um, that I, I hang on one of my walls, that whenever I'm running out of needles, or cottons, or elastic, or violin, I make a little shopping note of what it is I need to go and purchase the next time I go to my fabric store. So I'm always keeping um, ahead of what I need in my stock because you know there is nothing, nothing worse that you are busy sewing a garment and you have now run out of needles or you just don't have any elastic or there's some sort of trim or haberdashery that you needed to finish that garment and that means now you need to set more time aside to go back to the fabric store to go and purchase that to finish where you could have finished it at that particular time. Your pattern filing, so it's very important to have a look at your patterns. Um, go through your patterns and be honest with yourself. There might be some patterns that you just don't use um, or they're just all over the place. Kind of get all your patterns together um, and start going through your patterns and see which patterns you like, which ones you want to use. Um, have you got duplicate patterns? Are they damaged? Are pattern pieces missing? So start going through your, your, your clothing patterns first, your commercial patterns. Then once you've gone through all your patterns, um, you can look at, you know, start creating like a fabric reference file. Now what that's all about is you can basically, you create a reference file of your materials, okay, the styles that you have made up in your particular materials, and you write down um, what it is that you experienced about that material because this is a fabric reference file. You are starting to learn more and more about materials. So you make a note that you know you made this particular dress and you use this material, you've got a little sample inside your file and say this material is a rayon fabric and I absolutely absolutely loved sewing with it or it was um, a bonbon stretch fabric and I really struggled with it. So it wasn't a very good experience for me so in the future I don't want to work with bonbon, bon, but I preferred the round. So you made some notes. Well, I made a coat and I found this material was a little bit too thin or too thick. I had to change the needles. You make some notes about um, your experience with the fabrics. The next thing you would look at is creating um, a fashion reference file. Okay, so let's have a look quickly. So while you're busy folding up all the materials that you have in your stash, you will cut out a little sample, a little sample of the material, and then actually measure how much fabric you have, and put that into your fabric stock sheet. So that's, that's an easy reference for you to go back to, and to see how much material you have in the stash that you've got. Because this will help you to be able to plan your sewing projects, because you might look at your materials and go, oh, I like these colors. This will look great with the new little mini wardrobe that I'm making right now. How much material do I have? And then, you know, I want to make a jacket or a trouser or a skirt so you know that you have enough to make for that particular item or you can say I don't have enough from perhaps a jacket but I can make a skirt, for example. This gives you a nice guideline knowing exactly what you have 
in your actual fabric stash. What's a fabric reference library? So what does that mean? You know, only with experience, you start to understand and realize what the material can do to your garments, to your patterns. Does it fit um, better with certain fabrics or better with other types of fabrics or particular fabrics that you have learned that you really enjoy to sew with and to cut and other materials you absolutely despise. And that only comes with experience and this is where it all happens. So every time that you're making up a project, you're sewing a garment um, or a little mini collection, take little samples of that material that you're sewing and maybe your sketch or a picture or something of what you were making and then you start making a little bit of sewing notes. You can talk about the material saying that it's stretched, it was a very stretchy fabric and you found that you, did, you tried this one particular needle, it didn't work, you tried another needle that worked a lot better or you found that this particular pattern with this material was an absolute disaster or you just loved it, you'd love to use this material again because the overall project, the cutting, the sewing, the fit, the wear, um, the way the pattern came out, was you were so happy with it, you make notes about that particular material then you start to understand what materials you like more in your wardrobe and to sew with and what materials you want to totally avoid. And this is basically giving you your reference, it's giving you experience, it's your knowledge that you are putting together, understanding materials so much better. And it will also help you understand designs. So you know particular designs that this material will work well with that particular design. And this will also work for when you are making clothes for customers that you can advise what materials will work best with which designs. This will save you a lot of time, a lot of money in the long run. This is all about creating, you know, a sort of fashion vision file for yourself. You go through all your magazines or you could do something on Pinterest, etc. But I find that I, I like to have tangible pictures put into a file for myself. That these are ideas that I can use when I want to make new clothes for myself or whether I am designing for customers. That I can show them the file, go through the, the file itself and I can say to them, you know, I'm kind of talking about this sort of detail or this sort of like embellishment. I like that type of skirt. And by showing them a visual, it's immediately letting them see exactly what you have in mind. And they'll say, yes, that is what I like or what I don't like. Or if you're trying to make yourself some clothes, and by going through your, your fashion vision um, file, you'll find that, you know, you kind of, because you can see the idea better, you can go through your patterns and you can go, okay, that pattern's very similar to that picture, or maybe just by adjusting the pattern slightly, this is exactly what I can make for my particular design that I'm thinking of. And this is all about you becoming totally more organized. So what would you need? You'd need you know, a whole lot of fashion magazines, um, go and look at maybe secondhand shops where they have secondhand books, etc. that you can buy. Because a lot of styles are classics. It's not always about having the latest, newest um, fashion magazines because it's the classic styles or the classic pattern that you actually want. Okay, body shape. You are going to be making all these clothes, you are you know, getting so organized, you're creating a system with your planning for your sewing so you can be more successful, that you can actually use your time a lot wiser. It's very important to know what is your body shape because you might have all these beautiful designs and ideas and you could be making garments that don't suit you or you could be, have, you could be making clothes for a customer and you need to recommend an advisor what styles would suit her so you can identify what is her body shape to give her some advice on what styles would look more flattering, make her look taller, make her look slimmer or to hide certain areas that you don't want to show off, some assets that she is very embarrassed about or she wants to maybe subdue that and not make sure it becomes an emphasis in the design. So it's very important to know what is your body shape. So this is all about investing in yourself, you know, learning more skills and, and obtaining more knowledge. And it's going to help your sewing career. It's going to help you look so amazing. You're going to look so much better and you're going to be choosing the right particular patterns, not wasting time on styles that won't suit you.
If you are going to be making styles that don't suit you, it's going to be completely, you know, maybe out of proportion, not suiting your body shape, your body proportions. It could make you look tired by certain colors, the wrong colors that you're using, or the styles that you've selected can make you look totally overweight. Um, and, you know, you actually want to look a lot slimmer. So it's definitely important to start identifying what is your style. Being more organized. And it's also about you learning new skills and learning more about yourself is also to know what colors would suit you. So I know going back in the 80s, we spoke about different types of season palettes that suited us. Well, I'm a winter palette and there are my colors that I wear. So I know immediately when I go and buy materials or certain kind of prints or accessories or trims, you know, like my earrings, everything that I purchase, I know it complements the rest of my wardrobe because it's colors that I know that suit me the best according to my skin tone, my hair color, etc. So that's something that you need to maybe have a look at is to see what colors look absolutely amazing on you. So when you go and buy materials, you're purchasing wisely as well as your accessories. So get to know what is your colors. Right, the next thing is patterns. Now, I know I've done that in the past. Um, I've gone and purchased patterns that are almost identical or similar, or I've bought a duplicate pattern because I didn't know what I had in my hundreds and hundreds of patterns. I quickly learned to create a system. This is going back many years. When I first started my designing career, I would use other you know, commercial patterns to do my designs as well as me creating my own patterns. Because I found when I did commercial patterns, um, used them to draft my patterns, it went a lot quicker and it saved me a lot of time. So I would combine using uh, commercial patterns and drafting my own technical patterns. So I quickly learned to create some kind of system. So the first thing I do is, I've got an index. So I have an index of all the different patterns um, or different sort of styles that I'm, I might be looking at. So it's trousers, jumpsuits, skirts. So I put them in different categories. Then I've created um, a whole lot of these arch lever files and I write down exactly what is, um, what's in these particular files as per category. Then I take the pattern and I take it out of the, the original um, pocket and I put the, the pocket, I open it up and I put it into my file using this plastic um, pockets and then the, I, basically what I do is I photostat these original pockets, I photostat it and then I put the pattern and the photostat copy into a ziplock packet into a filing system cabinet um, in my sewing room. Okay, so that helps me to quickly go through these patterns and I know exactly where to find them. And then when I pack them into the container, I put them also into categories so I know that it's trousers, it's skirts, it's tops, etc. So it's easy for me to find the garments that I'm looking for in the pattern style. So this is an idea that you can use by putting all the patterns in there. So when you want to design or make yourself your own garments, um, it's easy for you to go through your patterns. You can even show your customers this and they can have a look at it and go, oh, I like that neckline, I like that, and can combine it with that, etc. Which will definitely make your life so much easier. The next thing you would be doing is your fashion illustrations. Because once you've looked at your patterns, you need to do sketching. So when, once you do a sketch, okay, this is more of a detailed sketch. Here's some other sketching that I've done. When you do sketches, you have an absolute clarity of what it is you're going to be sewing. Whether you're sewing for yourself and you're doing the whole plan of your little mini wardrobe that you're creating or for a particular event or a function or you're just creating new styles for a new season for yourself in the wardrobe, you have more clarity of what you're going to be sewing and what materials you will be getting. So, um, you know, go through your sketches. Now, the sketches could be used for um, when you are doing designs for a customer or for yourself. Um, it just gives you, you know, you can see exactly what it is that you're going to be making. Okay, there we go. Here's all my sketches. So normally what I do on my sketches, I write in full detail of how much material that I need. So in my planning your sewing, I've actually got little templates that you can actually put in your sketch 
the little swatches um, and then make notes of what trims, haberdashery that you need. So when you go shopping, you know exactly what to purchase. Here's another one of my sketches. Okay, and like I say, I always get in inspiration from my fashion vision boards. It's very important to do your fashion illustration sketches because it gives you absolute a clear picture of what it is that you're going to be designing. The next thing we'd look at is basically um, you know, half finished project. Now, half finished projects, you know, it gives you like this nagging feeling all the time, or this like little nagging feeling, or little nagging, tingling. Um, little voice in the back of your mind saying to you, you've got to finish this project or finish that one that you haven't done. So do yourself a favor. If you're not going to finish it, then just get rid of it. Okay, give it away, use it for stuffing in a cushion, just get rid of it. Or put it part of your planning time that you will be finishing that project so that you can move on to making something new. Then we're going to look at our recycling and refashioning your clothes. So draw up your list of all the garments that you're going to be recycling and refashioning or um, cutting up to use into new um, garments. The next thing would be is go through all your alterations and, you know, get them done. Get them done first before you start with new, um, new projects because these might be garments that look great on you. Um, but they just need a, maybe a small alteration that you can do very quickly Make the time, plan it, and get it done so you can move on to your next project. In my planning your sewing, I've got these templates so you can do all your sewing projects from your alterations to your unfinished to creating denim, um, to upcycle, to refashion, or to plan the wardrobe that you're going to be sewing. But these little templates it actually helps you to be more organized, you know, having all your little drawings and all your swatches on your, um, your templates so that you can actually move forward. Now, this particular book is um, planning your sewing. I find that by you know being more organised, you will you'll definitely and absolutely get more things done. You'll be saving a lot of money and a lot of time, and you know exactly what you do have, what you don't have, which you need to go and get, or you can just get on with your damn project. And the second thing is that the more organized you are, the more professional you're going to be, you can actually start designing and sewing for customers as well. So this opens up many doors opportunities for you to be more organized. And um, I just find that the more organized you are, um, there's less clutter in the brain so you can get down to doing the projects that you need. So I hope this kind of helped you to just get a bit more clarity and maybe some tips and ideas that you can implement to um, you know, get your planning um, for your sewing more organized and get the jobs done so until next time this is Tanya Sutherland it's all about you know you know being bold and expressing yourself through fashion and taking your fashion skills and sewing skills um, and looking absolutely amazing whether it's for yourself on a personal basis or turning this into a business until next time if you like what I've showed you today please it'd be wonderful if you could share it with your friends and subscribe